Hey, good evening everybody and welcome to the video. This video I'll be sharing some strategies that we use in the company essentially to automatically create, automatically create partitions on AWS S3. For example, how do we make sure that the data is clean? How do we make sure that essentially, uh, you know, the schema doesn't change, it doesn't break the glue crawler, uh, create a, a nice single table for all of that. How do we make sure all of that? I'm gonna be talking about all of that in this video. Hopefully you'll enjoy and you'll uh, get some nice insights. Uh, the first thing that I wanna talk about is essentially when the producers are producing messages, we essentially upload them to AWS S3, the raw folder. Now what we do essentially here is we upload individual JSON records. And remember, as we have studied in the past, individual files are not great for Athena. So what we do is we create individual file records, right? So now the file name essentially is the hash of this JSON. So what, I, what we do is we convert this into a string then we perform an MD5 hash, that becomes the file name. So now this way, as you can see, anytime you have a same data, right? If the data is same, then uh, the hash key will be same and you will simply update that particular record. So essentially the idea here is to maintain a pool of unique records, right? So you could do that. Now the argument or the discussion is how do we maintain a unique schema here, right? For example, now what I mean by that is say you have a name, you have an age, right? Uh, tomorrow, let's say title is added in the, in, in, the, in, 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 the, in the producer. Now the glue crawler is gonna break because there's a change in schema. How do I ensure all of that? So we took care about this strategy in following way. So name, so I'll, I'll show you in a nice Excel format. Say you have a name and age. So what we do is we convert uh, all the columns into an array. We take name, we take age. Then what we do is we sort them. Once we get that, then we sort the array, right? Alphabetically, right? Once we sort it, then what we do is we com compute an MD5 hash on this. So say uh, MD5, so say the hash was two, three, A, B, C, uh, right? This is the hash, right? Now we essentially store this hash on S3 as a metadata, right? Now, every time a new record comes in, we essentially do the same logic. Hey, take in the columns. Uh, so let's say this time the title was added. We sort it, right? Uh, once we sort it, then we compute the MD5 hash. And then we go to S3 and say, hey, for this file, hey, do you have, uh, uh, give me the hash. So I'm gonna say the S3 is gonna return you this hash, okay. Hey, but you know what? The hash that was computed was essentially this. So this hash doesn't match with that hash. So you know there's a change in schema. A new column has been added. You could do the same exercise with data type as well, right? So now I know that there's a change in schema. So now what we do is um, the way we organize the data lake uh, here is uh, year is equal to the value, right? Then we have month is equal to month is equal to uh, day. Depends on how granular you wanna go, day and then uh, we wanna create version. So anytime a new column is added, automatically it will create a version V1 or it will create a version V2. So uh, remember, so if uh, so for name and age, all the files will be dumped on the data lake, uh, whatever the, the MD5 hash of the JSON is. So I will say MD5.json. Uh, whatever, so you got the idea, right? So anytime now, let's say a title was added, right? When title was added, the structure will be same and here, what instead of V1, automatically a new version will be created. Now your glue crawler, you can essentially, if you want, you can create two separate crawlers, one for version V1, one for version V2. That's some, 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 some nice strategy that you wanna do, right? Always you wanna include a row hash in essentially every single file, right? So, but hopefully you got this idea, right? Uh, about that part. Now, the other thing that I wanna talk about is we should always, uh, so what we do is, uh, I'm not sure if you guys can see, but we run this function, right? Uh, so this essentially takes the JSON and always it, it cleans the data. So we if so if there's any none value or null, we also essentially replace that by the appropriate, uh, you know, none or NA. So we essentially do some pre-processing in the Lambda itself before inserting. So it does that, then essentially, uh, we have this code from Stack Overflow, which essentially flattens out the dictionary. 
Remember, you don't want to put nested dictionaries. Uh, you want to have a flattened version, right? So we try to make sure always, you know, the data is flattened out, right? So you could do that. And remember, you could perform the same exercise on the data type as well. So say name was, this was an integer, and tomorrow if it's an, it's a, if, if it's a string, you could, you could capture all that information using a hash, right? But that, that level is not needed. So essentially the idea here is, uh, if I come back to my diagram, you'll have your raw data in your data lake, right? So essentially your individual files of JSON record that you have here, then you can run a glue job on that, which means it's gonna take those files and it's gonna convert all those five in, files into parquet and snappy compression. In my previous videos, I have mentioned how we got 50 times faster speed, right? So we convert them into essentially parquet and snappy conversion, uh, snappy compression. Then we run the Athena on this data, not on the raw one, because individual files are not meant for rest, uh, Athena, right? So you wanna have uh, always Athena run on parquet and, 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 and stuff. So now the best thing about this is also glue has something called bookmarks. So now what do I mean by that is uh, if I show you, so say you have one, two, three, four, right? So say today you have three records, right? So you're not now the pointer would be at three. So next time when the job starts, it's going to start from four and five. It won't start from one, two and three. It's not going to reprocess the data. So glue has the that ability to do that. So the next thing we also do is essentially we have glue workflows. Now think about it, right? Every time you have to run a job, right? Then you need to run a th uh, then you need to run the crawler, right? So you have to do all of that. Now, as you can see, it's manual, right? What if you have so many jobs, a lot of tables that you want to do all these exercises? In that scenarios, what we do is we do something called glue workflow. Workflow allows you to uh, construct complex ETL pipelines, right? So for example, hey, first run my job, then run the crawler, and then maybe if you want to run a second uh, PySpark job, you could do that. So all that facility, you could easily do that, okay? So that's that. Now, the other way uh, that I want to just talk about the video is, if you don't want to do single files, and if you have multiple JSON files uh, separated by a new line character, then essentially uh, the file name can be the hash of the entire record. So convert everything into a string, and then you can uh, then you can essentially uh, create a hash of that. That becomes the file name. Now, what you can do if you if you needed an ability to update things on a file, well, you can maintain a DynamoDB table where you can have the hash. Uh, I guess the file. So now each, so as soon as a record is inserted into S3, now a job picks up, it's gonna iterate over that, uh, right? And then it's gonna say, okay, this hash is ABC12, ABC1, ABC2, ABC3. So you have all this hash and now you know the file name would be same, file name, whatever that name is. So now tomorrow if you want to update ABC2, you know which file exactly that record belongs to. So now you could run a serverless component, a Lambda. Uh, so let's say when you want to update things, you have a row hash. So hey, update this record. So I'll, what I'll do is I'll pass it to an API gateway. API gateway will pass to a, a SQS and then through Lambda. Lambda will essentially read the particular file, iterate over this, locate that particular record, update it, and then dump the uh, same data back to, to the uh, what you call S3. Now you'll say, well, in this case, Sawmill, since we updated, uh, isn't the hash gonna, is, isn't the hash for the file name is gonna change? Yeah, in this case, as you can see, now you need to change this hash because you are performing hash on 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 this, right? So in this scenario, yes, you would have to do that. Another option can be remember is if you have if you have if you have individual records, right? And I'll make one more. And as I said, right, each record will have a row hash, uh, whatever the hash is, right? So uh, what you wanna do is uh, you could essentially run a brew job and say select all the data with unique on this column. That way you can also eliminate duplicates. That's one way of doing it. There are several other ways to do it, right? Uh, that's not the only way. Then you can maintain a lookup parquet file for all the hash 
and anytime you want to update you could do a lookup but now as i said right there are new things coming in now you could leverage so you have apache iceberg right apache iceberg supports a complete asset which means insert update and delete so you could maybe use that as i said these are some of the strategies i wanted to show you right based on the version always flatten out your data convert the data type in, into string by default so it doesn't the crawler doesn't break automatically create partitions uh, version uh, so take all the columns compute the hash and store the hash on the metadata and then every time you insert check the hash and see oh is there a change in the hash if the hash change it's a new version if the hash is same it's a same version of the data so you could do all this stuff right then of course going back here now since you have your data in your data lake, uh, right? Now I can run Amazon Athena on the top of that, right? My data is very, uh, you know, it's, it's compressed using Parquet, much more faster. Uh, so I could do that. Then I can build my BI dashboards on AWS QuickSight. I could do that. If there is any data cleaning needs to be done, you could write, use Brew, which is a visual tool to clean data, right? If you don't wanna do that, you could use, uh, 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 glue jobs or you can use glue studio right there's a lot of facility aws provides right so you can combine all these things then essentially you could use aws uh, glue workflow to you know start jobs run crawler and then if you want to take things to a next level you can have step functions orchestrate all these actions right so yeah i hope you have enjoyed it i just wanted to provide you some insights on how you can maintain versions how you can automatically detect that the, that the file name or the schema has changed um, so also one more option, there is an option on AWS which says when you create a glue crawler, it says create uh, add new columns only. So when you check mark that option, a single unique schema will be created by uh, by the by, by by the glue. It wouldn't create multiple tables. So if people are complaining about the problem, hey my glue crawler is creating a lot of tables. Well, you can opt click on the checkbox which will create only one single file. So you could do that as well, right? But as I said, you do wanna partition your data. That's extremely important based on um, essentially year, month, and day. Another strategies could be uh, really quick. I have discussed this in my live seminar uh, session. Um, so when you have a raw, right? So say you have Jan, Feb, Feb, then transform right so now what you can do is your um, you can write a job or you can write a python script that's gonna iterate over the folder so so for each folder it's gonna run a job so for example uh, this jan would be a, a job that's gonna start in aws batch february would be a job that's gonna start on aws batch now what this job are gonna do it's gonna take all the data from the jan folder uh, it's gonna create a jan folder uh, whatever transformation you want to do so that way is gonna essentially take the data combine it compress it and then move it into this data so now every time so the reason you want to do this approach if you're doing single files right if you have single records in that uh, so you wanna so single record will allow you to prevent duplicates right so you could do that and then now you'll say sawmill but uh, don't i have to run uh, this job again so when I wanna, so say something was updated in Jan. So when you restart the job, always the job will essentially for delete the Jan, whatever uh, data is there in the Jan, it would recreate the folder and then it would repopulate the data. Well, in this case, you are wasting a little bit of resources, but remember, everything has a pros and cons, right? Now, if you look for the Dynamo option, you have to maintain lookup tables, right? Everything has a pros and cons. But some of the things that I really want to share with everyone, I know a lot of people are working with lakes and warehouse, so hopefully some of this will help you. Like, uh, as I said, creating hashes, maintaining the hash on, a, on the lookup table, or maintaining it on an S3 as a metadata, these are all some of the strategies you can opt. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you have enjoyed. If you have questions, leave your question in the comments. As usual, keep smiling, keep programming. See you guys 